After another week in the stock market, we saw some bullish signs for the MJ sector. We have lots of fun IPOs coming this week, some rockiness for Chinese stocks, some more stimulus talking without much walking, and unfortunately we have more hospitalization increases and new stay-at-home orders. And with all of this in the forefront, many are coming from far and they are coming from wide. Just to ask one simple question, and do you know what that question is? folks. That question is what? What, Charlie, are the top three stocks for this week? Well, in this video, we are going to be talking about the top three stocks for this week. But first, what happened last week, Charlie? In last week's video, we started talking about Jumia. Jumia is one of the plays that I see as having a long-term consistent uptrend, so that means that any dips in it I want to violently exploit. Thus, last week, I screamed, I want a good deal. And that deal came a lot faster than I thought amongst a stock offering that caused several periods of selling off. But then Jumia bounced a bit over 30%. People always ask me, Charlie, if you believe in the long-term growth of a company, why not just buy it at all-time highs? Well, the reason is because of this. I want a good deal so that I can play off these dips. If your analysis is that something is going to go up over the long term, well, that means that you're that much more empowered to play dips on runs like these. But don't worry, folks. Jumia is just getting started. There's going to be many, many more plays like this. Hopefully, we get some more selling off so we can get some more dip recoveries. But the reason that we spoke about this is because it's a rocky uptrend. That means many, many opportunities for us. Okay, next, we spoke about NEO. We talked about how NEO had deliveries coming up that week and talked a bit about the share price. I raised a few questions as to whether whether NEO could beat, and they did indeed beat in terms of deliveries. But last week, I did not give a short-term price prediction because I feel that it's nearly impossible to say when the EV sector cool-off is going to stop. Like I said on Friday, we are waiting on the sidelines until the EV hype comes back. Next, we spoke about Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. We spoke about their earnings, and I made the case for Zoom beating on earnings and presented two scenarios. I was right on their beat on earnings. I said they were going to beat expectations on earnings, and I was right there. But I thought scenario one was more likely that we get a beat on earnings and an increase. But we got scenario two where Zoom fell into a good deal territory. I'd like to see an overreaction recovery, and we are yet to see if I'm going to be right on that. But anyways, folks, before we get into this week's picks, there's one thing that I ask in return, and that one thing is that you hit that ravishing like button. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you see value in the following video. And quick plug, our Black Friday sale on ZipTraderU will be ending at midnight tomorrow. This was, of course, the biggest sale we've ever done, and we've kept it going to make sure that everyone had a proper amount of time to make a decision. But of course, all things must come to an end, so if you'd like to get $100 off before checkout, go ahead and put in coupon code BLACKFRIDAY100 before tomorrow night at midnight. And of course, as a member of ZipTraderU, you will get lifetime access to our daily morning briefings, our step-by-step -step lessons, and of course our private chat. But only join us if you're planning on completing all of our lessons and are going to put the work into practice and actually retain the material. And obviously we thought out exactly what you needed to know and the tools that you needed to have in order to be successful. So if you're going to join us, make sure to at least dedicate yourself to the process. Even if you dedicate yourself to the process, it's going to be challenging, but at least if you dedicate yourself to the process, you at least have the appropriate structure to learn how to trade. I'll put the link below. Okay, let's start with Airbnb. Airbnb will be IPOing on December 9th as ticker symbol ABNB, and this is a big deal. This is probably going to be one of the most hyped IPOs all year. And if you live under a rock, Airbnb is of course the extremely popular company that allows owners to short-term rent out their property. Airbnb has streamlined the process of monetizing the pissing off of one's neighbors. There's never been an easier and more profitable way to piss off that nice old couple down the hall than by renting out your apartment to rowdy teenagers teenagers from Airbnb. I'm sure Nancy and Rupert appreciate it. But anywho, Airbnb was hit hard by the pandemic, no shocker there, and it caused Airbnb's valuation to dip almost in half, from $35 billion to $18 billion. But this week's IPO will be selling Airbnb shares in the range of $44 to $50, which would equate to a return to the pre-pandemic valuation, even though Airbnb is still far away from performing at its pre-pandemic levels. But obviously, we're still deep in the pandemic, and Airbnb was a healthily growing company pre-pandemic. Their annual gross booking value was up year over year consistently, and after the first few months of the pandemic, we saw Airbnb rebound dramatically. And while it's likely again to slow into the winter, this rebound does show some indication that once the pandemic is completely behind us, Airbnb will be fast to rebound, and that's a good thing that investors want to see. So how do you actually value something like this? Well, we can compare it to some of the other players in the niche. 
We have ticker BKNG trading at a valuation of 86 billion. That is booking holdings. We have Expedia trading at 18 billion. And if Airbnb is introduced at this price, we have it trading at 30 billion. Here's the thing, Airbnb's demographic skews a lot younger. It's also a much earlier stage company with a more forward looking business model. If you look at the demographics that use these companies versus the demographic that uses this, well, you start getting a great growth story for this company. You start thinking the future is more here than it is here. And if Airbnb stays at this price, it'll be valued seven times sales. Whereas with bookings, it's valued at eight times sales, both based on 2021 projections, of course. However, when you have valuations that are multiples of sales, you have to have some sort of growth story in that. And if we've learned nothing from the current market, it's that the current market prefers to buy disrupt companies. But Airbnb will now be the new disruptive leader in travel. And I think that with booking trading at eight times sales, I have a hard time believing Airbnb won't rise above its seven times sales. The market loves disruptive storage. Just look at any EV company this year. It doesn't matter how much actual infrastructure they have in place or what they're actually doing. The market loves disruptive stories. So given the potential market for Airbnb and the brand recognition, this company has all the workings of a hype play. Now, with that being said, when it comes to any IPO, I'm a bit of an IPO skeptic. Many of you know, that work with me in ZipTraderU that if you ask me, should I buy an IPO? I almost always say, wait a couple weeks, wait for the price to settle. The reason is, is because I do not believe that new traders should be buying IPOs. In the beginning of every IPO, you get a lot of short-term money flow. And I've seen many IPOs where the short-term money goes and rallies a stock price up really, really quickly. And everybody buys in, all these new traders buy in thinking, oh, it's gonna keep going to the moon. And then what happens is that short-term money then leaves and it crushes the share price. And because it's a new IPO, it's very difficult to recover from the perception of a crushed share price. So my take is be skeptical of any IPO. If you're going to be playing this, you should either be day trading it or long-term investing in it. And if you're day trading it, you need to be careful with your exit points. You can't just hold this blindly. This is going to be an aggressive play. So do not hold blindly. You need to make sure that you have a clear plan. Okay, speaking of being skeptical of IPOs, let's talk about DoorDash. DoorDash will be going public this week as well. Ticker symbol will be Dash. Weeble is reporting it to be out December 9th. Cough for free stocks if you sign up with Weeble in the link below. But honestly, I think this is going to be an even tougher play than Airbnb because this is coming in at a high valuation. But to be fair, DoorDash has certainly become one of the leaders in the food delivery market passing Uber Eats, Grubhub, and Postmates, as well as Zip Trader Eats, which is on the bottom of the chart. You can't see it because we don't make any deliveries, but I promise it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Delivery services have obviously had a boom during the pandemic as people relied more on them due to restaurant dining closures and of course, stay at home orders. But here's the deal. DoorDash has been one of the biggest market captures of this. DoorDash has just destroyed the competition. This pandemic has been good for DoorDash, but DoorDash knows this and they're taking advantage of that by selling DoorDash at a more expensive value. If DoorDash IPOs at the price that they're saying, its valuation will be around $30 billion compared to Grubhub's $6 billion. And to put this in perspective, DoorDash has about three times the market grasp of Grubhub, yet its valuation is going to be trading five times as much. And obviously that's for good reason. DoorDash is a much bigger player and it looks like they're going to take a lot more of the growing market. But DoorDash is capitalizing on this fact and that's why it's so expensive. And I'm not saying that DoorDash isn't going to eventually earn the valuation or that investors aren't going to decide to hype it up even more, but it's important to note that when you're looking at something like this, it's a little bit of a different situation than Airbnb because with Airbnb, we're sort of in a bad phase right now because of the pandemic that's only expected to boom afterwards. Whereas with DoorDash, well, the pandemic was good for DoorDash. Obviously, we see food delivery going up over the next 20 years, but the pandemic in the short term was huge for DoorDash. After the pandemic ends, you wouldn't expect to see the same level of reliance on food delivery services. Whereas again, with Airbnb, you'd expect to see more people booking once the pandemic ends. So in many ways, these two companies are much, much different. But what they do have in common is over the next 10 to 20 years, you do see both markets growing. But in the short term, I see this as a tougher picture for DoorDash. And I think that investors really have to think about that. DoorDash wants to IPO it at this price now because they know that they're at the height of their business right now. It could take years to get back to here. So why not raise the money now while it's at the highest valuation? Okay, and lastly, gush slash drip. This is a leveraged ETF pair for oil and gas. When oil goes up, gush goes up. When oil and gas go down, the inverse of gush, drip goes up. These are trading instruments that we like because that means we could play both sides of the move and they're relevant right now because they're providing huge 
volatility. If you look at Gush from Friday, we had a 16% run. The way we trade this is, of course, plain short-term price strength over our SMA line. This is confirmation and validation 101. These are just for trading intraday movements. When it comes to holding something, you don't want to hold these leverage ETFs because they have decay and they're going to decay over time. But if you are looking to trade these, these are some of the best opportunities because you can trade both sides. Gush goes up, drip goes down, drip goes up, gush goes down. So there's Really, you can trade off both sides of the move. Okay, folks, well, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us in the comment section below or join us on Zip Trader Circle, which is, of course, our wonderful and free Facebook group. And lastly, if you'd like four free stocks with Webull, would like to sign up for an excellent broker, and of course, would like commission free trading and all of our favorite scanning tools, such as our pre market gainer, I'll put the link below. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.